Kennedy honorees. How does that sound? Big. <laughs> the president and the first lady will be there. Half of Washington officialdom will be there. And when you think about it, so many of the great musicians, um, it's a really special honor. Mm. Yeah, it is. And, you know, we're British, too. So, no, uh, I was going to um, say, uh, although McCartney's been. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think uh, these years that fly by, you know, we got together so many years ago that, uh, and for zest and, and uh, adrenaline and energy, we, we had the years that we had together. Yeah. And then so many years later, these people s sort of sum it all up and say, OK, um, we, we remember them, which mm -hmm. is magnificent, really. When did the critics take notice? Well, they didn't like us at all. I know. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they understood what we were doing. What didn't they understand? Um, I, um, I think they probably were um, reviewing albums uh, relative to bands that had singles out as well, and so they, they would make that very um, identifiable, if you like. Each singles would be identifiable to the sound of a band, the character of it. We didn't do that. So, so we were pushing and pushing and pushing, trying to get right over the horizon musically. So. Uh, I think they, they, they would have trouble because of what they wouldn't have a point of reference mm -hmm. that they could take from either the first album or, or if, if they're doing the second yeah. album and certainly by the time they're trying to review the third album in a very short time I might add as well because they're up against a deadline of pub Well and also there's a reverential thing about um, <clears throat> white kids playing blues yeah. you know and I think you know you had great people here um, with Mike Bloomfield, Elvin Bishop, uh, Canned Heat, people who were actually bringing back Skip James and Sun House out of obscurity. Yeah. And we came along and we mutilated the blues and twisted it upside down. And um, <clears throat> I guess it was considered to be bad taste too, you know. I think there was a feeling that we were slightly precocious and not being, sticking to the act, trying to emulate what it was in the first place. And the worst thing in the world with music is to keep it going identical forever yeah. and ever. But was that a driving thing for you guys, wanting, let's turn it all upside down. Let's do what we hear and turn it upside down. Well, I, think, I do think we turned it upside down. Oh, you clearly down. did, but does that I, what you I think we did because the way that acoustic music was being presented yeah. wasn't, was in a way that hadn't been presented before. And so it, it wasn't just, it, it wasn't, even though there's a, there's a common denominator in us with the blues, um, we were, presenting, we were presenting music that had influences from all over the place, really. Yeah. But, it was, but it was a way that it was crafted together. Yeah. People, and, go ahead. Well, as a singer, you can't actually get anywhere near the initial delivery of those great recordings, which weren't part of a plan. They weren't somebody looking after their career interests. They were people expressing themselves. And so for me to come along and try and sing, you know, <clears throat> like Robert Johnson or... Uh, B.B. King or, or Buddy Guy, first time yeah. I met the blues, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. How could you hope to be a guy from the middle of England and get anywhere near that as a, as a presentation? It was a pointless exercise. It just wouldn't be part of the agenda at all. So mm -hmm. it's just about getting it on. And I was 20, John was 22, and Jimmy was 23 or whatever it was. So we didn't have this kind of need to be purists or whatever. Was there a leader? <laughs> among you? Was there first among equals? Well, Jimmy was in charge uh, uh, with the crafting initially and with mm. the, the nous, the understanding <clears throat> and all that. And Bonzo and I were really just couldn't believe it. He got the extra money for driving the van <laughs> yeah. and uh, I got some penicillin. Yeah. And we were feeling pretty good about all that stuff, you know. Um, and going back and telling all those people who kept crossing the road to avoid us, that you know something was going on. Uh, as time went on, we matured a little bit from the middle of England, and we played a different role as as things developed. Did it keep getting better? For a long time, yeah. 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 Creatively. Yeah. The response. What response. We played bigger and bigger yeah. venues, which I must admit I've. I, I wasn't that keen on the really big venues because you, I always felt that you lost a lot of the, mm. of the subtlety in the band. Everything had to be just 
broad gestures. Yeah. And whilst it's great that a lot of people can see you, you know, there's, to me that wasn't what the band was about. I don't think we ever managed to uh, supply the demand if, you, if we're talking about concerts. We always sold out yeah. and we were always doing multiples in cities, mm -hmm. but then we'd have to be moving on. Um, we all, that's it, we always had full attendance everywhere and from the early days, those very early humble days, in say 69 when we were really, really touring and establishing from one coast to the other, from, from the west coast to the east, I mean that was it in a matter of months. We were, we were really established, but the people just kept wanting to come and see us, you know, more and more and more in droves, yeah. and that never stopped. <clears throat> no, the event became the event, and we were trying to play with the same sort of inter, inter, interaction in the middle of an event which people come for for different reasons. So it was, a, it was an event, it was a far out experience, um, and I understood that because I had my own places to go for events too, you know. But sometimes it did get in the event and the response within the event got in the way of what we were doing, I thought. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we couldn't really... I mean, the great thing about what happened in 2007 when we played together again was that we were back, even though we were in a reasonable sized venue, we were close together, really listening intensely and intently to the interplay between the four of us with John's son playing, you know? Yeah. And that was exactly kind of how we'd started off, you know. London 2007, yeah. at that concert. Yeah. You wanted to show you still had the right stuff. You could do it. Tell me more about that moment and when you knew that and why it became, for everybody there, an extraordinary evening. What well, was it we, about if, the music? If we were going to do it with the massive reputation that preceded us, that we'd have to go out there and get it right and we'd have to work on it and, 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 and really come together and be so collective about the, the willpower to come, you know, to, to make this into, if we were going to do it at all, it had to be the best concert. And we also had an opportunity here to be able to sort of have a retrospect on our own career to, to, to select the, the, uh, the various numbers that were going to be in the set. And it was, it was a perfect opportunity to go out there, stand up and be counted, and show why we were who we were. But it needed some work to be done on it. Obviously, we needed to rehearse. We couldn't take this in a really flippant way. We had to really and commit it, to it. And as it was happening, could you feel it and sense it? Did you know it? Well, it got more relaxed and more fun. Uh, by song number three, I think we knew that <clears throat> we weren't going to we were on it. I mean, the thing is, we set a huge bunch of standards for ourselves with every time we, we cut records. We were trying to be inventive <coughs> and we, we weren't trying to supersede anybody else's gig. We were doing our own stuff. But it was still uh, rather like this wind that's blowing through here. It was, um, <laughs> it was certainly something to live up Somebody to. Somebody close the door. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck what? Berry would say, a Chuck cool would say, breeze. Yeah. A cool breeze. Yeah. 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 Okay, so after so this... So it's living up to that, getting yeah. it right, and not faking it, and not being some kind of plastic. But you knew you had it. This was the magic. We got it Well, going. plus we had Jason in the equation yeah. here as well. Jason and had come to John's yeah, son. We'd, and, we'd, and we'd known him as Jason, Jason the, the kid, you know, John, John's son. Yeah. But, you know, it was one rehearsal, and, and we all knew he was Jason, the man who was really tearing at the bit. You know, he had so much enthusiasm yeah. to... And, and there was such a will between all of us to really make this, it, to not saying to make it work, it was working, but to make it even better than that. And everybody in the world knew it. So why did you not take Led Zeppelin on tour? What you know about Led Zeppelin is you're interviewing us now, you interview lots of people, you, you, they're interesting shows. But you have to be creative and imaginative and move on. And I think the great essence of, of Led Zeppelin is the creativity and the imagination that developed with each project. And a project is a project. It's not just going back and visiting the past. It's moving forward. And I think that we don't, I don't see us being a stadium actor or whatever it is going round and round, making everybody feel great playing the hits or whatever they are. I hear that as part of a big picture, 
of what we were once capable of. And that's the reason we came to America. We played new songs and we did what we did and we took songs that made the audience go, wait a minute, I'm not sure about that. Do I like that? And three years later they'd say, yeah, I like that. And that whole creative thing is really what musicians, for me, live for. But if you recaptured that, why couldn't it continue and be creative and, and engaged and, yeah, and even more so? Why You didn't know that it couldn't build from where it was in 2007, well, even maybe, though yeah. it had some relationship to the past, a lot. Mm. It could be about the future, couldn't it, Jimmy? You wanted well, to go on tour, no, 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 didn't no, no, you? Look, it was didn't you want to go on well, tour? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's 2007 that we did it. Right. So you got one year that passes, two years that pass, three years that pass, four years that pass, we're coming into the fifth year. Mm. So, you know, that's a long while. Five years is quite a long while. Mm. In five years, uh, uh, you know, in the whole sort of world of Led Zeppelin from 1968, we've done a lot. Yeah. Mm. That's, a, that's a long time to be missing time, you know? But, but it is said that it was you, that you had developed this other interest and that you did not want to do it. No, I want to do great creative things. And these guys are my buddies. They're my friends. We're soul partners in a big chunk of our creative lives together. And I think that's a wonderful thing to have experienced. And if that can be the kind of uh, melding of just hanging out together long enough to find out if we all know what key we think in, that's yeah. great. I mean, but it's ever onward. And John's busy, right. Jimmy's busy. We're all busy, and it's not the be-all and end-all of everything. It's just what we love and what we may love in the future. What would have been going forward that was not a tour that would have been good for you guys, well, that, good for us, good for music? It's difficult to say. I mean, is a tour necessarily good for music? Well, <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> or good for us in that in that way? Okay, um, so a tour's good for me. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We all had to be of the same mind to do it. I yeah. think. And, and you weren't. And, and I don't think we were. Mm. And that would, have, that would have been hard. But everybody got along, didn't they? You essentially were, it was the music in the end for you guys. And that kept you together. Even though you had that car accident in Greece and had to mm. take some time off. Mm. Had to interrupt the tour. Yeah, yeah, it was a wheelchair year. Yeah. 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 Mm. Even more tragically, you lost your son. And you just did what any father has to do, is grapple with that loss and forget well, everything else. There are priorities in life beyond being a, an entertainer. You know, there are a lot of things that are much more important. Um, and, and we are very lucky that the gods have given us the gift to be, to do what we do. But we do many other things, you know, and, uh, and time seems to, I don't know what you think, Jim, but I think time gallops now. Yeah, I did. Don't you find that? Yes, I it seemed, it does. Once I do. upon a time, if we could make Zeppelin 1 in 36 hours, you know, 36 hours now seems to be like the blink of an eye. I want to hear you tell me what happened that night and why mm. something didn't go forward from that night. Because what was a Led Zeppelin was magical. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It, and it is. is. It, it is. Well, yes, it is. And it should these are great moments. This is a great time. We're exactly. going there. We're going to see some very, very um, hard-working, conscientious people who are trying to put this country back on its feet. Exactly. And mm. I love that's brilliant that we should be in the right company. Mm. We are, I mean, for me, I'm absolutely, mm. uh, I'm so pleased that everything is where it's supposed to be in the great wheel that turns mm. here in America. Long way to go. But we're entertainers. If we can entertain each other, we can entertain somebody else. It seems a reverence for the music. So, and the fact that the four of you had something that you discovered that was so special. When something happened, you, you, you just had to stop. Mm, you couldn't really? go on. You hmm. couldn't go find another singer. Hmm. You know, it didn't work. You thought about that. It we didn't work. couldn't go and find another drummer. Another drummer, another drummer. Another drummer. Yeah, yeah, until Jason. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, you didn't have another guitarist. I mean, you had the world's greatest guitarist with you. That's you, right. You know? It's amazing, really, when you think about it, with uh, Bonzo and with Jason. I mean, it was another reason that, the, that that gig was so important was that Jason had always been on the, 
on the periphery of everything, goading us about a particular thing, the way that it was played in a particular venue on a particular yeah. date. On a particular bootleg. Oh, yeah, <laughs> 25 years ago, when he was in diapers, you know, or yeah. what, actually, no, he's in diapers now. Um, and uh, <laughs> so it was only right and, and meet and just, and the great thing was that Bonzo's mom was still around to see it, you know, yeah. mm. and Joan yeah. was there and she was uh, in her lace and taffeta uh, having a great night <laughs> and the, the occasional on odd sherry. Uh, so that was another great fait accompli, really, in the, in the middle yeah. of it all. So, but when John died, it had to be over. Well, it was crucial. Well, it was four piece. Over. It was a four piece yes. band. Yeah. You know, it was a four piece band that when it toured, each concert had different different elements to it from the night before. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. the night that was going to be uh, in front of it, and so it was constantly changing. We had this, you know, yeah. we had this whole. We'd, we'd built up this whole sort of elevation, really, to how we played and, 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 and synchronicity and connection. That to actually, once you lost one of those four members, uh, and at the time that like we did, there was no way you could bring somebody in and rehearse, rehearse pieces that were from bootlegs or sound tapes or whatever to say, well, we did it like this, like you were yeah. saying, in 1975. Can you do a bit of that along with what we did here in 1977? You know, the whole, the, the whole thing would, would have been so disconnected that it would have been impossible to actually be able to play and not see John Bonham there. And whilst it was great what Jason did, it was, for that performance, certainly based on what his father had done before him. And he took loads of chances and yeah. he was a star that night, yeah. Jason. But it was still built on, 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 on the foundations of what mm. his, his father had done. Mm. What's great about mm. that is you can now buy the DVD and see what it was like. Yeah. And feel it on that day. And there yeah. were great moments of even in all that what I was talking about about moving on, being futuristic between ourselves or with other people that we work with or whatever it is. There were moments within that set where we were risking it. These guys were risking it and trying new bits and pieces. And if it had fallen on its face, I guess we'd have had to cut it out of the film or whatever. Mm. And we didn't even know there was going to be a film. We just, yeah. you know, it was like, oh, here we go, let's do this. Did you believe in your brain and your heart and your bones that we are the best band alive? No, I think within what yeah. we were doing, we were pretty insular. There was a lot of bands from England who were playing stuff. There was a lot of bands from everywhere. They knew it. But they're all great. You're everybody, too, you know yeah. what? You're just being too <laughs> self no, everybody knows. You're being too something. I think everybody's good. That's why they do it. They, they celebrate together all these yeah. different people who are playing. Yeah. But at the same time, all of us would like to have been you. See, the element yeah. of Led Zeppelin is you can, you can hear it. Mm. <laughs> Not <laughs> always. You, you, no, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. But when you listen to it, you can hear what each individual person is yeah. putting into that mm. and how two will be bonding with two and two here and three and all four. And it's just this weave. And, uh, uh, and, and, and that, that is the thing, I think, which has musically helped the longevity of it because it's such a textbook for young musicians. But, uh, yeah, I, the, the, I, would, I would say, you know, without being conceited here, that, yeah, it was the best band. We all work in for it to band. be the best band. And, I mean, and other bands have said that to us yeah. anyway, you know, our peers. So. But also, I mean, as an individual musician in that band, when I went on stage, I didn't think, oh, I'm going to show everybody how good I am. I thought, I'm going to show everybody how good Led Zeppelin was and work towards that. Make, the whole thing was to make, do everything you, good to, uh, everything you could to make that performance really special and the band sound fantastic. I couldn't get over the fact that I was hanging out with Janis Joplin and people like that, and they were encouraging me you know, so many times my voice used to pack up and Janice used to bring me tinctures and um, all legal. But like, try this orange juice, which of course was laced with absolutely everything you could get to wreck your voice. And it was great, this fraternity of, of, of lunacy that was like, it kind of, that's the, that was the payoff for me, was this, the fraternity of uh, musicians and the stuff that you couldn't find in Britain no matter what, you know. Those festivals that we played, we were the best band at what we played. But round the corner came John Lee Hooker with his band, yeah. and round the corner came 
Pacific Gas and Electric. Whoop, and uh, <laughs> it was just a great time. Mm. Kennedy Honors. Uh, you stand where remarkable people have stood, and, and you well deserve to be there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.